Let's go now to ABC reporter Mark Willisey, who was on board the plane and joins us now. Mark, talk us through what happened. Well, Dan, we were sort of taxiing out to the runway and the pilot had turned onto the runway and, you know, given it full thrust. And we were at the end of the runway, literally the, the wheels were just taking off the ground and there was a, a large bang and a really jolting shutter went through the plane. We knew immediately something was wrong. Um, but what was more disturbing, I think, was that the plane really laboured after that. It, you know, obviously it was trying to do a full takeoff on one engine, which they can do, but it was a case of not really getting the sort of altitude you expect when you're taking off uh, in a usual uh, manner. So it was a, a real struggle to get airborne. Um, and it was clear to everyone, the crew and the passengers, that something was badly wrong at that point. Um, the plane slowly got more altitude and we sort of banked to the west. We did a big loop, came back over Sydney. Obviously, the pilots weren't coming on to tell us anything because they were, they were dealing with what was going on. And then, um, you know, we went out over the Pacific and, you know, we, we did a big, large bank over there. And finally, after 10 to 15 minutes, the pilot came on and explained that something had happened to the right engine, um, that it was shut down, that things were under control. Um, but, you know, where I was, I was on the right side. I couldn't see out. But there was actually a Qantas pilot in the, amongst us, one of the passengers, and he came down with the stewardess and he was looking out, um, trying to get a visual on the engine. Um, and then uh, I assume that that was to go back to the pilot to see what he to say what he could see. Um, and eventually, um, I don't know whether they were dumping fuel or whatever, but we we got down, um, we landed. Um, they took us to a part of the uh, the airport where we we're away from everyone, and the fire trucks came out um, and and did a visual inspection of the uh, of the engine. But as we were coming in, it was clear that there was some sort of fire on the runway. Now. Um, there was some sort of lot of smoke, a lot of fire engines, um, and it uh, look. Let's just say that that smoke and fire wasn't there when we took off. Now, whether it has anything to do with this engine problem or explosion or whatever it was, uh, I couldn't tell you. Um, but you know, eventually we had to make a very efficient, what we call an efficient um, uh, exit from the plane because the, the the engine, the right engine, was still leaking some sort of fluid. Um, but. Um, I have to say that when we landed, there was a lot of applause and cheering amongst the passengers. Um, and you have to praise it, always the professionalism of the pilots and the crew. Um, and I have to say the passengers were all very focused. Um, some worried looks, of course, but um, everyone's safely on the ground now. Yeah, and I understand, uh, Mark, that we that we do have uh, the track map of that flight that we're showing now that shows, as you were explaining, after mm. that takeoff, going out and circling uh, a number of times uh, over the ocean there and then before coming back in. That shuddering that you mentioned, uh, that jolting shuddering as you were um, taking off, did that continue to happen while you were airborne for that time? N not really. There were, there... It was a case, especially when we were out over the ocean, that um, the plane was banking a lot and it just seemed... It, it didn't feel as stable as it would normally feel um, when, you, when you're doing those turns. Um, and, yeah, there was... On coming in, there was a lot of... Uh, let's say it was a bit of... Not shuddering, but the plane was moving around a lot. Um, obviously, they had the left engine working and that was where the power was coming from and that's where the control was being sourced. But... Um, yeah, it, look, it, it wasn't a very pleasant experience, obviously, um, because the plane just did not feel stable at any point. But the most frightening bit, I think, for everyone was the, that, that labouring to get altitude just after we took off and the bang and the shutter happened. That was the sort of frightening bit because it, it, it wasn't getting altitude like normal. And, and so, you know, um, that one engine was really pumping it out hard to get us into the air. Yeah, that, that labouring, it sounds like that were, was the working in overdrive to try and get the kind of level and the thrust that's required to get up into the air. That's right, and these planes are obviously designed to operate on one engine. Um, it's not an ideal situation, as you and your viewers would understand, but, um, you know, the pilots did an amazing job, and I think everyone, everyone understood why there was no information coming from the cockpit, because they were dealing with an emergency situation, so everyone remained very calm. Um, but, yeah, I knew as soon as we banked... Um, we, when we banked um, right, or headed left, rather, we headed towards the west, and we then came back over Sydney that that this plane was not going to Brisbane. We were heading back uh, to Sydney and there was some sort of emergency um, that was actually unfolding. Yeah, and in terms of the time frame, once you got up, how long roughly was it that before you touched down again? 
Oh, yeah, that's a good question. It was sort of one of those situations where you're sort of bordering on a little bit of panic, I suppose, so you lose track of time. Um, It felt like it took us a good 15 minutes to get over the Pacific and probably another 15 um, out there before we landed. So probably 25 minutes to half an hour before we sort of got back on on the ground. So as you'd imagine, um, people were very concerned. There was uh, one woman... um, asked to be shifted so she could be close to her children um, because they were they were sitting in separate parts of the plane or just just apart from each other um, obviously to calm the, the kids um, and again all the crew was very professional and calm and the pilot when he came on eventually to tell us what was going on when it was under control he was he was very reassuring and calm as well so yeah it's um, it's ended uh, well and and I suppose that's why they train for these situations. Um, but, yeah, it's not something you'd want to go through every day. And in that 25 or so minutes, but like when, when you were saying that you're kind of just focusing in that moment and that mum wanted to sit with her kids, give us a sense of, of what the mood was in the rest of the plane uh, while you're waiting to get that information. Yeah, well, I, I've been flying for, you know, decades and I've been at the ABC 30 years and I've flown all sorts of airlines all over the world in the Middle East and North Africa and Asia and you know there's been some moments that you think well that's that that wasn't very nice um you know I've had situations where I've had to return to Tokyo with a with an American airline because of a problem and dump fuel but I have to say that one that big that big bang as the wheels were leaving the ground and the shutter that was like nothing I've ever felt and um, you know I've done hundreds of flights as I say but I, I was pretty impressed with everyone around me about how calm they were I, I, there was some seriously worried looks you know can't hide that but um, everyone was very calm no one panicked or carried on um, and you know when we got to the ground we weren't clear of anything then either. We had to obviously go to a part of the airport which was just sort of more isolated where the fire engines could check us out and everyone followed instructions and, and um, yeah, it was, um, I suppose you'd call it a textbook exercise except it wasn't an exercise. And Mark, I've just got a statement through from Qantas that says, quote, one of our flights to Brisbane experienced a suspected engine failure after takeoff from Sydney Airport this afternoon. After circling for a short period of time, the aircraft landed safely at Sydney Airport, the spokesman said. Our pilots are highly trained to handle situations like this and the aircraft landed safely after the appropriate procedures were conducted. We understand this would have been a distressing experience for customers and we'll be contacting all customers this afternoon to provide support. We'll also be conducting an investigation into what caused the engine issue. So that statement uh, that's just come out. Uh, Mark, we might leave it there with you for now. We will speak to you again. uh, But thank you and do look after yourself this afternoon. Thanks, Dan.